Good evening and salutations, my BNB fans. I really had to think about that for a minute. So, here's the thing. Ridge is a very difficult character to watch. He's a very difficult character to watch because while his heart may be in the right place, and I said this yesterday, while his heart may be in the right place, this guy comes across as a bit stupid. And yeah, I can sit there and say a little bit stubborn, but mostly stupid. Um, you know, he, he snipped there telling Brooke, oh, you know, you gotta... One second. He snipped there telling Brooke that, you know, he's not gonna change. He, he starts off with his usual crap about Deacon. He's not gonna change. He's just gonna hurt you. Blah, 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 blah. You gotta help me put a stop to it. Did you not hear a damn word that Brooke just said? Brooke said, if we try to stop Hope from seeing her father, she's going to leave. So, we can't do that. You're telling me you're not going to back me up? I, seriously, it was like, it, it was almost just like she was just talking to a brick wall. Because it, 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 that would have been... More to satisfactory to watch her talk to a damn brick wall than her talk to Ridge. Because Ridge... I was going to sit there and make a pun about Ridget, but like... No, he's just stupid. He's just really dumb and so irritating to watch. And irritating to sit there and try to get him to see a bit of reason and a bit of logic. Because at the end of the day, Brooke is like, we can't do that. And he gets, he just keeps it to saying, well, you gotta sit there and back me up. I don't understand why you're not backing me up. And of course, this isn't really so much about protecting his family. Okay, that, that might be some of it. No, this is still, and you know, I'm trying to be sympathetic. And I want to sit there and say what I was going to say, which pretty much was him being butthurt about him sleeping with his wife. But yes, that's literally what it's about. And why I don't blame him. I don't blame him for that being the reason why he doesn't like him. I get that. But this isn't about him, you know? And he's making this more about himself and his ego than he is about listening to his wife and what he and what she wants for her daughter. This isn't about them, but that's what he keeps in the daughter I'm making about. Oh, he's going to sit there and do this. He's going to do that. He's going to disappoint you. And I'm like, so I guess you just lived a perfect life, right? Because you, you never lie. You never done anything to disappoint people. Um, you know, you, you've never let people down, right? Oh, oh, you have? Oh, okay, cool. Because, you know, for a minute, uh, it, it's just like, it's so irritating. And then he's like, I'm going to sit there and leave before I say something I regret. Yeah, because talking to you was just so damn enlightening, right? I, he's just a very irritating irritating characters sit there and just listen to him just go on and on and on and on and on and he doesn't listen to what she says that's the part that was the part that was just like driving me up a wall and it was just like are you kidding me and that's why I got to a point I started looking at the time like how much longer do I actually have to sit there and sit through this because that's literally what it felt like it literally felt like a chore to sit there and try to listen to him ignore his wife pretty much that's just Literally what he's doing. And, you know, Brooke is not sneaky trying to defend him. You know, not really. Brooke is just like, listen, this is what, what, what our daughter wants. This is what my daughter wants. We, She's a grown woman. We can't tell her what she can and can't do. You got to sit there and help me. I don't understand why you're sitting there defending him. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Like that just try my goddamn patience. They really do. Um now let's talk about the hypocrite known as Steffi. And Liam, because watching those two try to And this is a point where it's like the story is getting a little kind of redundant and honestly tell you the truth, kind of annoying to sit there and watch. Now it's not something to say I'm not a fan of the show. But it's just like rinse and repeat. I, I swear, I guess I didn't just look at my other notes and be like, well, this is practically the same thing. 
I mean, it's just Liam Snitzer saying, well, what if he's bad? What if there's a chance you can sit there and do this? And Stephanie's like, oh, well, what if he wants money? And I'm like, I'm sorry, sweetheart. Do you, do you not actually have money? I'm not Snitzer saying that's what a father should be doing with their kids. But you're trying to make it seem like they're going to ask for money. They're going to ask for your money. How much money do you make? <laughs> I mean, literally, you saw her house. It's not like she can't sit there and spend, you know... Ten dollars on on him to like get some food or anything like that. It's not like they don't make money, you know. For her to sit there and say, he may, she, he may sit there and start trying to ask for money. Ugh, for goodness, like hearing that sometimes I'm just like, how long has this show been on for? I'm pretty sure it's been some really exciting episodes. The show does not last that long to the test of time. Um, but just being really bad, okay? It does not survive shows, outlast shows like As the World Turns, Passions, um, and you know, all the other shows. How even One Like to Live, gen I mean, One Like to Live, All My Children, maybe Poor Charles, but, um, you know, the, the point is, I'm pretty sure it's been on for a long time for a reason. Very difficult to sit there and try to understand when you have characters that just go and she just goes back and forth. And it's one of those things where Hope is like, listen, just like you told me to sit there and, you know, stay out of your business when it comes to us, you know, your marriage. I'm asking you to do the same thing. But that's not what I'm trying to do. That's exactly. Are you, I'm like, yo, this chick, what does she do again? Because I was just like, this woman can't be this stupid. That's not what I'm trying to do. That's exactly what you're doing. You're interfering with her marriage by Snitia gaslighting her husband into practically telling Hope what to do. That's the exact same thing that you were Snitia telling, you know, that you were Snitia going on about when you were Snitia telling Finn, oh, don't put any ideas about Sheila. But you're doing the exact same damn thing. And the fact that she can't see this is like, I'm sorry, what do you do again? It's 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 a real good thing that your 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 dad is is pretty much almost like the owner of this company because I don't understand like the the level of stupidity in this woman when she talks is just overwhelming okay it's overwhelming and to hear Liam talk sometimes just like bro. Everything that you're saying about the fact that he could be a danger, he could, you know, he could disappoint her, you know, he's let her down in the past before, um, you know, if there's like a 1% chance, it almost reminds, I'm not going to lie, it almost kind of reminds me of Batman, um, Batman v Superman, when, <laughs> when, you know, you had Ben Affleck being Bruce Wayne, he was like, you know, if there's like a 1% chance, and there must be an app, like if there's a 1% chance that he can do something bad, then it's an absolute. That we have to take it or something like that. And it was like, no. If there's 1% chance that he's going to do something bad. Bro, how many bad things have you been doing so far throughout this show? And how many times over and over and over and over again have they just forgiven you? Not to mention your own dad. You know, the person that you said that, well, you know, I'm not trying to talk about dads. I mean, my dad is exactly no angel. No, he's not an angel. He's not an angel. But yeah, he could sit there and come and go and see his grandchildren whenever the hell he wants because he's so-called changed and he's so-called reformed even though he messes up almost about maybe what twice a year give or take given his track record but yet he's just going on and on and on about how he's bad and he's bad news and this that and the third and I'm just like do you not understand how stupid you sound first of all and it just got exhausting to the point where Hope was like alright you know what I'm just gonna gonna head on out and uh just not gonna be in this room anymore and Liam's all like well she doesn't do that that's not what we do we don't just stand there we don't just sit there and just leave we're standing and we just talk it out uh not when the talk is going exactly nowhere and just been going in circles and circles and circles for well how long has it been, how long has it been going on for yes because and I know this sounds kind of crazy not even wants to sit there and just, you know, constantly bang their head against a wall, knowing that you're not going to get anywhere. And that's exactly what that talk was. It didn't go anywhere. 
didn't go anywhere. Hope still wants to see the best in her dad. Understands that, you know, listen, there's a good chance. And I'm not going to do anything bad as far as jeopardizing my kids. Point blank. That is the end of the conversation. It should not have been going on as long as it did. And my goodness, I was just like, looking at the time, looking at how long. And like, so this is still going on, right? Like, we're, we're still doing this. Yeah. Okay. And just for the record, um, I think he says something along the lines of, and I haven't watched the movie in a while, but like if there's a 1% chance that he can be evil, then we have to take it as an absolute certainty. And I just remember that quote, and that's from Batman v Superman. I just remember that quote. It's like, no. No, no, it doesn't. That That's, no. That's extremely paranoid. That literally makes no sense. And when Lee was not there talking about that, like, you know, if there's a good chance that he could do something bad, if there's even a small chance, then, then we just have to sit there and just kind of prepare ourselves. No, that's just called life. Like, anyone in that room can sit there and do something bad or disappoint someone. That line literally made no sense. And I, it's just amazing when you have lines like that that just makes it through the cracks. It's not just that it makes it through the cracks. I mean... Somebody actually had to approve that. Somebody had to sit there and look at that and be like, yep, okay, that makes sense. All right, let's put it out there. And it's just like, what? Like, who? Okay. On a side note, um, at least they got the whole intro today. I always like the intro towards b, &B. I, um, I feel like it's actually my favorite intro. Not just because of the, you know, the part that I like. Um... But just because I just like seeing, you know, how they look in the poses and the clothes and stuff like that and the fashion and stuff, you know. Um, so I always like when they do the intro. Whenever they just skip the intro, it's like, well, damn, like, really? But they did the intro today. So I was actually, I was actually really happy about that. Um, I know that I did the, um, you know, I was doing intros towards different, um, like I did one towards Days. And I did one towards GH. And I was sitting there thinking about doing one towards b, &B. Only problem is, you know, CBS, well, somebody, somehow my b, &B review got flat. And I'm afraid that if I show the intro, like if I do like a little reaction or whatever towards the intro, then they're going to be like, oh, we got to strike this down. Now granted, it could have been the music that could have probably got me the copyright strike, who knows, but I'm just wondering, like, should I bother to take it? Like, you know, take a chance on it? But, um, you know, because I'm pretty sure they got different intros throughout the course of the years or whatever. I don't understand why they stick with an intro for so long. Like, literally, they will literally stick with an intro about a good five or six years before they decide they want to change it. Um... And of course, with GH, they literally stuck with like the worst, the absolute worst intro that they can do. And it was almost just like they just said, screw it, let's just put something out. Um, and it just showed no creativity whatsoever. Um, Days is kind of a very boring intro. It's just a little... Um, sand thingy whatever I forgot what it's called but it's a little time thing and it's just so damn boring you know at least with this it's like it pops you know but I guess it makes sense since you know the show kind of deals with, like the fashion, fashion industry and stuff like that with the colors and the poses and the looks and the glamour so it just makes sense to actually have an intro like that but um yeah it's definitely my favorite intro even out of all the four shows including Y&R by the way, um, I'm pretty sure one of, you know, one of the models that does the intro towards um, b, b is Michelle Stanford. I'm pretty sure one of those is Michelle Stanford, which is on y &R. But um, anyway, I think that's pretty much about it. If I forgot anything, please write down in the comment section below. <sighs> Damn. This was... Um, this was something. All right, I'm going to go. Thank you for watching. Be safe. I will see you in the next video.